Hey, what's going on guys? It is Mr. Stir Fry again, back with another Doki Doki Literature Club video. So, it looks like in the last video, I, I guess, I did it for Sayori, I guess, I, again? What? Okay, I meant to do it for Natsuki. What happened? I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. So, um, frick. So... The only one is left is now Yuri, so we're so we're gonna try to do that if we get if we have time, but like in another episode, if we do, like, you know. But anyways, let's just get started into this. Alright, so then Monica now. Let's Okay. Hi Gunster Frank. How's the running going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote from today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. See? Why? Frick! Like, oh, I meant to do it for Natsuki. I don't know what happened. Okay? So... Yeah, I don't know what happened. So... Okay, I don't, I don't know. Let's... Okay, never mind that. Let's just... Yeah. You two are like, um... A, you two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you spend a lot of time with her, even in the club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I'm i not shy. It's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I know it takes a bit time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. Oh, frick. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless something of meaningless noise. The noise won't, it won't stop. Violent, grip something waveforms squeaking screeching piercing N something cut something something okay i can't read those words i'm sorry like playing it like playing a chalkboard on a turntable like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust an endless poem of meaningless uh, load me that's pretty suspicious. Um. And that. That's kind of suspicious. Um, we might be getting into some stuff, okay? Okay. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just. A kind of thing I'd never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my face on the paper. Choosing where I ha and how to... S cho choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're 
trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of, be of feeling or conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not even, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. Then that ha when, when that happens, don't forget to save your game. What? Don't forget to save your game. Oh, screw that. I'm saving my goddamn game right now. <laughs> That's some creepy crap right there. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Oh god, we're getting into some weird crap. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, we're, get we're getting somewhere now. Wait, is that is this a tip tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Um, something tells me that is not right. That's not right. <laughs> Don't be sure to save your game. What? Be sure to save your game. I mean, that's kind of true, but like, I mean, I wouldn't expect that. Um. Okay. That's freaking weird. All right. Let's go. Um. Da -da -da -da. Okay, Yuri. Uh, is it my turn? Let's uh, how compares to yesterday's. Hmm, I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Sir Fry. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. I don't. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri, eh? I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. M Metamorphers can, o can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain, like turning a bunch of tears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your re reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimidate exercise. I see. That's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that. If you'd like to read it, of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands her, me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night. While I was slicing bread from a guilty... Um, wait. Something. A guilty snack. My attention was caught by the something of a... Raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, it, the the first time I noticed my strange t something as 
and an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My sub subconscious, well, aware of the co consequences, well, uh, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. And the the something beauty of my something knife of my cutting knife was the I okay something the bread my some my hungry curiosity the raccoon and something okay the raccoon something the moon something is she's in something or refl and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife break my back hurts I don't know why the ver the very same light that gl glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend I sliced the bread of fre fresh and soft the raccoon becomes excited oh on perhaps I I'm meaningly pr um, projecting my emotions into the newly some satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to fo following me. You, you could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So many, so my bread is always hand hand handily something every time. Handy every time I, um, something my cutting knife. The raccoon shows me an excitement, a rush of blood. Um, frick. I keep saying um a lot because, like, I mean, I, I usually don't read aloud. Something conditioning. I sliced the bread and fed myself again. Okay. Ow, my back hurts. Why does it hurt? Freak. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metamorphical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's alright. I mean, that's right. It's a bit closer to my pref preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid, vivid imaginary, and com conveniently, m and something emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that could, that's. That different people can relate to their own way. I want to express the way I it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those s sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing them about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because. They're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Do you have anything like that, Stirfra? Well, yeah, I guess I do. Ah, oh, break my back. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individual individualities. Frick. <clears throat> back even if it even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable after all if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness I would probably hate myself <clears throat> uh, I might be ranting a little bit now but I'm gladly that you're a good li listener licensor <laughs> I almost said licensor right uh, my back hurts still. Ow! Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. 
I know she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is it is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know, Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me at yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess it's just lucky that with this one. Yeah, exactly. You you got you just got lucky, you know. Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to to write poems this cute, I mean. I mean, well, written. No, I mean, uh, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh, reading it again, I d decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and too do and doki doki. It would only it's impress you, you know, girls who like those kinds of things. Uh huh. For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly, incredibly easy, easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read my poem now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Ah, oh, frick. Back hurts. <clears throat> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky <laughs> something hairy, ugly spiders. Well, that, that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing my favorite love song every time she sang the the fr frick. Every time she sang the choirs, my my heart would pound. So, to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. And that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy um, has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she's she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world would be better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. God. <laughs> Dang. Judging. Ju wow. That, that's basically about judging people. Wow. Okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't um you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler Analogies, and and it helps people realize how stupid they they're being. Like anyone would agree that subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone. It's about how everyone thinks about my. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if something that you're afraid if people find out they make make fun of you or think less of you. But that's just that just makes people stupid. Who cares about who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things huh that's funny Yuri wrote about something similar today huh 
Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she, that she was some. She has some weird hobbies. Not that there is anything wrong with that. Ooh. It's nothing like I would judge her or anything. That's okay. He has trouble finding words. I uh, I guess I should not try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Out back words. Wait. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveniently something emotions. Frick. I, I can't read that word, I'm sorry. I think I mispronounced it, but I don't, I don't care. It's important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a po good one tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Ow, my back, it hurts. Why does it, ow, why does it hurt? Sorry for the pause. <laughs> it's just my back hurts. I, I well again I woke up early in the morning so yeah I I, I would think I of course wouldn't want yeah you know <laughs> okay let's just get back into it okay everyone we're all done reading each other's poems right yeah right okay yeah. <clears throat> Keep pausing. I have something extra planned f today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I do. I don't really do well uh, with last-minute preparations. Don't read so much. We're just. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the po the, the event. <laughs> keep screwing up with words. Okay, that sounds great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're all going to be performing. Performing? Pre um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're all we're also going to let everyone else come up to recite poems too. Sarah is Sarah's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare it ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, frick, Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds up, it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't really, you, wait, you didn't already pu start putting those poems, I mean those posters up, did you? Frick, I, I, I am not, uh, I need to do this like during the day or something, like I need to stop, go, st like waking up in the middle of the morning 
and then just start recording. I need to stop because, like, I, I literally because I'm tired, my back hurts, and yeah, I should do it around like at least 12 o'clock or something, but like, I don't, but I just do this, okay? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in, in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand. Where, where, where they, where they're coming from? Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we could give our, it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this, of this club, yeah. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that the literature club is all what the literature club is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being an in, inmate. Intimidate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's still those reasons that we're all in this club today. Do you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you in here in the first place? You know, I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know we, you can do it. No freak. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Sayori and Monica have been trying to really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out with a little bit. Well, maybe, but it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over with it. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around the uh, uh, everyone else. It, something faces. Uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. Uh -huh. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move into the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't, if you can't recite... Your poem in front of the club? How do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Uh, no. N don't worry. I'll start uh, to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh huh. Of course. Now let's see. Marco flips through her notebook and to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title, the title of this poem is The Way it, They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. 
Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is the is this something she'd done before, or is this simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Sayori has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recit the frick recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's, fi Yuri's fired up and all of a sudden, Yuri clutches the sh sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. The po this poem is called... Uh, Yuri uh, um, anxiously glances at each of us. You can't... You can do it, Yuri. It It's called... After image of the crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is the is she on suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri absorbed her books. Recovering words transform into the sharp sil syllables of the fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in this structure that she in something with perfect timing. The This must be a rare glimpse into the writing fire Yuri keeps conceal concealed inside of her head. Suddenly she f finished, finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as she, if, as if she's something even herself. I, it's up to me to save this situation. The first, I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and give, we give Yuri a Recognize, re recognition um, she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud it for her, but we're, but we caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem and to her chest and rushes back to her into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Ah, uh, frick! All right, that's gonna be it for today, you guys. We reached the we reached the thirty minute mark. All right. Yeah, I I just leave these to like thirty minutes and stuff. All right. Okay, so thank you all for watching. This is actually pretty fun. I'm liking this game so far. So so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to fry that like button and when when. You, if you're new, why don't you just subscribe to the channel and please subscribe to the channel because I want I want to at least um, be a good YouTuber for y'all in the future. So, if more subscribers, the more I be um I um try to like get good and um less cringy like this. But uh, all in all, I will see you guys next time. So, you know. Also comment below. I haven't been getting comments lately, and seeing what um what you think of these Doki Doki videos. And I will see you guys next time. See ya.